Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're going to look at navigation from the front seat of the F4 Phantom and a few other little things besides. Creating a waypoint chain should be very easy for anybody familiar with the DCS mission editor. First of all, select the aircraft and then enable add on the waypoints and simply start adding your waypoints. So you want to fly here and then maybe over here and maybe down to this point here and then finally on to the approach path here and then landing at this airport. For the last one we'll just select it over to landing. The elevation of the waypoints doesn't really matter because they are not utilized by the navigation system in the F4, only the latitude and longitude. There are only two bindings that I will be using today. One is the Jester UI Action, and the other is the Jester UI Middle Select option. This allows me to navigate the Jester Wheel menu. To start waypoint navigation, bring up the Jester menu, go to Navigation, select Go to Resume, and then select the waypoint you wish to navigate to. For a waypoint chain, we will start on the first waypoint. Sure. Jester will now configure the navigation uh, the, uh, system, set. which will show up on the HSI. On the HSI, we will see several things. We will see the navigation is illuminated. We will see an arrow pointing and a heading indicator pointing to the direction of the steer point, the distance to the steer point, and the aircraft's current course, not the course towards the steer point. Additionally, we have some extra controls. We can turn on the flight director by clicking on this knob with the FD labeled on it. Once we have the flight director turned on, the artificial horizon will now have the course deviation indicator on it, which is this vertical bar here. That bar tells us which direction we need to steer towards for the waypoint. This vertical bar will move to the center of the screen when we are headed directly towards the selected steer point. When that happens, this arrow should be matched up here with our course on our, of our aircraft. Now let's turn off and make for our first waypoint. Now that we're set out on course, we can see that the course indication, our aircraft course, and the course deviation indicator on the artificial horizon all line up. Now, let's say we decide we no longer want to go to this waypoint. For this, we bring up the Jester menu, go back to navigation, go to resume, and let's say we want to go to the second waypoint. You okay? Okay, steering is set for the new coordinates. Course settings are set up on the, uh, the HSI and the artificial horizon, so we turn to follow those. Now we roll out on our new heading. Our new heading shows that we are 70, now 69 miles from our waypoint. And we're currently flying a course of 63.5 degrees. Also, having watched our handy video on fuel management, I realize that my centerline fuel tank is empty. So I will switch to my wing tanks and we should see the fuel, internal fuel increasing. I will also use this opportunity to jettison the center fuel tank because it prevents me from using the forward sparrows. As we approach the next waypoint, Jester will automatically increment the waypoint navigation to the next waypoint. As we get closer to the waypoint, it becomes harder and harder to maintain 
an exact bearing to it because it becomes more sensitive. So any wind blowing you off course or any small misalignments will push you off of your waypoint. But Jester will manage that for us. We do not have to cross directly over the top of it. Next turn point is updated. And there he goes. It is now in. And we have our new heading. To identify which waypoint you are currently navigating towards, bring up the Jester menu, bring up navigation, and now we can see we're headed toward turn point three, and it is in our active primary list. Now as we near our waypoint again, Jester will again update us to our next waypoint. This time I will intentionally not hit our waypoint directly. I've got steering updated to next turn point. And we can see that it is updated on our HSI again. Now let's say you're flying along and you realize that you need to go someplace else. You need to divert you need to change the mission, whatever the case may be, the existing pre-programmed waypoint chain will not work for your new navigation. How do you modify the waypoints or create new ones? First we bring up the Jester menu, then we go to navigation again, and here we can click on edit flight plan or divert to. If you need to divert for fuel issues or damage issues, this is a quick way to change your navigation. You can enter a latitude longitude, probably one you read off the F-10 map, you can pull a waypoint out of a flight plan and use it. You could use map markers or airfields or other assets. Typically, for diversions, airfields are the most useful. You can pick airfields, and it will list airfields within about a 50-mile radius. And so, in this case, the only ones I have access to are these two because I'm close to them. Now, back to editing the, wa the waypoints. Go to Edit Flight Plan, and then you have two flight plans. Your primary flight plan is the flight plan that is created by the mission editor. Your secondary flight plan is kind of a scratch pad you have for creating and modifying waypoints. When you first get it here, there are no waypoints. So you can click on the Add Turn Point, and you have the same options as you did for diversions. You can enter a latitude longitude from the map. In this case, it wants you to enter it in this format here. You will have to use the keyboard to enter it. You can pick an existing point from a flight plan. So I could go over the primary flight plan and I could pick any one of these and it would be added to my secondary flight plan in the first position. Same thing with the airfields, I could pick those. Or, if I have nearby assets, I can pick those as well, but in this case I have none. Let's look at map markers. Currently I have no map markers other than bullseye, so first thing, to do, next thing to do is go to the F10 menu. Let's say that I want to navigate to Bannock and land using the TACAN ILS system on runway, runway 34. I could put a waypoint or put a map marker directly on Bannock or I could grab the coordinates for Bannock. But flying directly to Bannock does not actually help me line up with the runway. So I will use a map marker to position the aircraft along the, the extended runway center line close enough that I can then easily pick up the ILS. So I will create the waypoint and I will give it a name and now that that is there I will go back into the aircraft and set that as my waypoint go into map marker there's my new map marker yes, sir. select it and it is now entered into my secondary flight plan going back here I can now I can select go to resume select my secondary flight plan, select my one entry in there which was from my uh, map marker. Roger. All right, secondary flight plan steering resumed. And now we can see that Jester has changed the secondary flight plan and he has set up the, the navigation for that. Let's continue on our way.
Now, as we're beginning to get into the area of Bannock, we should set our systems up for the approach. First of all, let's look at the TACAN. The TACAN channel for Bannock is 47 X-ray. So we change the tens digits with this knob here, and we try to get down to 40. And the ones with the inner knob here, 47. The X-ray and Yankee are selected by the outer ring. We want transmit and receive, so we leave that alone. Now we can test it by toggling over to TACAN here. And we see there's no distance available and the needles are spinning because it can't receive the TACAN station from this range. So we'll leave it on our nav computer. Next, and conveniently over here on the left, is our VOR ILS radio. The ILS station for Bannock is 108.3. We can use the inner dial to change the decimals, so we'll change that to 0.3. The outer dial changes the main frequency number, but it was already on 108, so we'll leave it there. To use the ILS, we will need to use the flight director switched into VOR ILS mode. The radio system in the F4 will detect whether the station is a VOR or an ILS based on the frequency, and 108.3 is in the ILS frequency range. Once we're in the range of the TACAN, when we change our, our navigation mode to TACAN, we will now see the range of the TACAN station and the direct course to the TACAN station. I do not want to turn right now and make a direct line to the TACAN station because I want a course that will line up with the runway of roughly 340 degrees. If I change my flight director navigation to TACAN, I can now change my course setting to the desired course that I wish to take to the TACAN. If I set that to three, four degrees, I can see my position relative to that course line. Currently, I am left of that course line. Once I approach my waypoint, that course line should start moving inward. And that's my cue to start my turn so that I try to intercept the line rather than overfly it. Okay, the needle's starting to center up on me, so I'm going to get ready to make my turn. Go into a gentle turn to try and intercept the, the course path. Okay, on the course. Now let's turn the ILS on down here. Change to view our ILS. ILS lights up. And now we can see that we're above the glide slope and still to the actual left of our ILS path. Okay, glide slope is coming up. I'm in the back. And they're ahead of us. I can see the runway. We'll continue following the ILS just for practice and demonstration's sake.
So have a good day from Bannock.